Paradox should hire me playtest EU5 or someone like me. What do I mean? Whenever I play games, I tend to break the game, and this happens in any game I play. I have a special talent for finding things that are broken in games and abusing them. Now, do I mean Paradox should literally hire me? Well, that'd be cool, but not so much. More so for EU5, I think they should hire somebody. They excel at breaking the game, and they're going to be able to get tons of bugs out of the way before the game starts. And in this video, I'm going to talk about everything I would change about EU4 in an alternate universe where I have the power to do so. And let me know what you guys think of these ideas. I know a lot of them aren't going to hit, and they're going to be all over the place. But okay, before we get into it, the normal sub and like would be greatly appreciated. But now let's talk about what I would change in EU4. First, I want to talk about dismantling the HRE. I've gone ahead and tagged into Italy and integrated Austria to show you something I would like to see. Italy has a mission called Humiliate Austria, which gives you a Dismantle the Empire CB. So you can see here we have this Dismantle the Empire CB. When I declare this war, it's going to pull in all the other electors. Basically, it gives them a call to arms. And I think this is a much more fair way to dismantle the HRE. So what I would like to see is giving this CB to anyone that borders the HRE or that's in the HRE. That way, they have a legitimate way to dismantle the HRE that is still going to be challenging. I think that being able to ally the electors and dismantle that way doesn't really make a lot of sense. Just because somebody is allied does not mean that they would be willing to dismantle the HRE, in my opinion. Dismantling the HRE is very powerful, and I believe it should be something that is fairly challenging to pull off. However, in the current game, being able to ally the electors and simply siege down Vienna is not too challenging for most nations. So I'd like to see that adjusted a bit. And I believe that if they poured over the CB to all nations bordering or in the HRE would be awesome. Similar to the Mandate of Heaven, where if you border them, you get that mandate CB. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Burgundian Inheritance. I think this is a major issue in the game, something I'd like to see changed. I believe the inheritance is too strong for smaller nations to get. It basically makes your nation double in size, and the game really isn't even that challenging anymore because you get so much land. I have a few ideas on how I would fix this. The first thing that comes to mind is making eligibility only be historical. That being said, I don't know what happened historically, but to my understanding, it was between Castile, Austria, and maybe France. And I think those three nations are probably the only ones that should be able to get the inheritance. I would also be okay with France getting the French region territories and Austria adding the members to the HRE is kind of a scripted thing that happened. That way, the other nation gets super powerful. However, in the current state, I think it's really silly that these smaller nations will get it. And then Austria will declare an offensive war by himself and he won't be able to call in allies. And you can simply just ally a bunch of nations and easily beat Austria. So it's even a two for one. Now you get Burgundy and you get free land from Austria. Or you could even dispense the HRE with it. The way that the AI HRE kind of doesn't get to choose. I've seen times where an OPM will be the emperor and he'll declare war on me when I'm France. And it's just kind of like the AI clearly doesn't make a decision there. He has to 100% of the time demand the lowlands. So I think that could use a lot of adjustment. And I've seen cases where Austria is even allied to you and fighting a war with you. And he'll literally betray you mid-war to demand that. So the AI definitely doesn't make a choice there. They have to choose to demand the land, which I think is kind of silly. And overall, I think that mechanic surrounding the inheritance could use a lot of work. Another idea I would have is Burgundy does not roll marriage with people that are lower than its total development. Another option would be making Burgundy way less likely to roll marry anybody who is not as strong as them. That way you would need to be somebody pretty strong in order to get the inheritance. So just a couple ideas. And of course, with this video, the ideas that you guys are pitching in ideas as well. Let me know what you guys think of my ideas and what you would do differently. The other thing I want to talk about are the Aztecs. To start, I think that you shouldn't be able to adopt Aztec traditions unless you have the Mesoamerica unit tech. Simply put, if you're not in this technology group, you shouldn't be able to adopt their traditions. Speaking of some mechanics over here, I think the Annex Migratory Tribe should have a requirement of border provinces. You'll see some of the colonizers have land that they can't core, which I'm sure is not good for their nation overall. So I think we need to change Annex Migratory Tribe to require a way to take the land. And I want to talk briefly about the Aztec mission tree, and I believe this is shared with a lot of different natives. But we have this Punish the Invaders mission, and it's super easy. You need to have a total of 75 cities or 10 provinces that used to be owned by a colony. So essentially, if you win one war, or simply you get strong enough, you get high American tech units for free, which are insanely overpowered. They're better than Western, which kind of ruins a lot of immersion for me, and it's kind of unrealistic. Now... I'm okay with High American being the reward of this mission tree. So in essence, if they simply take away option three from this mission and require you to do this one, if you have to take 100 provinces in Western Europe, I'm totally okay with you having High American tech at that point. 
Another thing is we should lock the religion over here. You shouldn't be able to swap to animist and basically ignore all the reforms. It's kind of a silly mechanic. I actually loved the Aztecs prior to 1 through 7 way more. I thought they were a much more challenging and fun experience overall. I also don't really understand why they nerfed the Mayan reforms. Now they have a five-year cooldown, which doesn't make a lot of sense since as the Aztecs, we don't have a five-year cooldown. If they want to implement a five-year cooldown, I think they should make it across the board rather than targeting one religion over the other. I also think that the American Frontier mechanic probably should be reworked or just removed entirely. It really doesn't make sense to me that the Mayans get nothing even close in comparison. Now you can see here we have a similar mission for Maya. Instead of getting Frontiers, we get an extra colonist into the game. Some gov cap, Miltech cost, and overextension modifier. If you ask me, I don't think this is on par with what the Aztecs get in the Frontier mechanic. But the biggest offender for me is simply make High American Tech way harder to get or just remove it from the game as it is a fantasy idea group and either should be really hard to acquire or just shouldn't exist. Now I want to talk a little bit about idea groups. I would say 90% of my games, I'm picking Abin or Diplo as my first two idea groups. And I feel like those two idea groups are just so far ahead of the pack as far as the other idea groups go. The reason being is because they have Prong Sports for Cost here and a CCR here. And the amount of CCR that adaptability gives is out of this world. So how do they fix that? Well, they either nerf adaptability and flexible negotiation or what I might like better is that they bring other idea groups up to par with these, giving them modifiers that are equally valuable. I would say Deus Volt is close, and it's probably the third best, or what I would say is the next best thing. And so if we could do something like that, which gives us incentive to pick the idea because it has something very potent in it, like these three do, then I'd be pretty happy with that. And again, feel free to give you guys' opinion on what I'm saying. That's the idea of this video. It's not to say, hey, I know everything, and <laughs> this is what it should be. It's more of it to say, hey, here's what I think. What do you guys think? I'm going to throw out some ideas that are a little bit far out there. And I'm sure some of you guys aren't going to like them. I often find that endgame tags, to really have value, they need core creation cost. So it makes me question, is core creation cost simply too valuable of a modifier that it should be removed from the game entirely? And on that same thought, let's throw problems for core cost in that same category. So here's the idea. We remove all sources of problems for core cost and CCR, minus the age ability from Reformation. I'm okay with having a bit more from that age. That would significantly slow down our conquest, which would make playing into the absolutism more interesting. And absolutism would still have the powerful modifiers that it does today. I believe that that would greatly increase my chance of actually playing into the age of absolutism because I'm not so powerful coming into it because I didn't, I wasn't able to stack the insane core creation cost and problem source for cost that I currently am now. And on that same thought process, what if we remove avid efficiency beyond absolutism? and the age ability. I think this would make World Conquest much more challenging, and I would be much more likely to play into the late game because Conquest is going to take longer, you're not going to be able to take as much at a time, and you're, there's going to be more consequences of taking too much land because CCR isn't such an accessible mechanic. That being said, Absolutism would be a lot more potent because that's your only source of CCR, more or less. And now I want to segue into culture converting. If you guys watch my videos, you know that I like to tag switch a lot. And to do that, we unstate our land, and then we restate only the one province of the culture. So for example, if we were trying to go Venetian, we would go and unstate everything else. And then we would just restate Venetian land, and then we would culture shift. Now, I think it doesn't make a lot of sense that we can culture shift so easily. Now, how would I fix this? Well, a couple things I would like to see. And this one will go a little bit deeper. I think that the whole state mechanic should just be removed. I believe that states were added at a certain point, and I don't think they really make a good addition to the game. I think that once you core your land, it shouldn't be able to be uncored. And I think this whole state and half state mechanics, they shouldn't really exist. So to culture shift in this universe, you would actually need to go through and culture shift to 50% of a culture to culture shift to that culture, meaning it would be much harder to do so. And that would kind of fall in line with how powerful switching to a culture can be. So if I want to go Prussian culture, that's going to be a time investment. And really the payoff is insane. So doing so might still have value, but it would actually be more of a cost to get there. I think simply unstating your land and then resetting is just too much value. In fact, most times in my world conquest, I want to be in half states. It's more efficient and I really can't even afford the gap cap to full state anything anyways. So in simple, make us have to actually convert our cultures. I don't think that just unstating and setting up one province should make that your primary culture. It doesn't really make sense. 
kind of a silly mechanic, if you ask me. And I want to briefly talk about hordes. And I want to give you the warning that I almost never play hordes. So take what I say with a grain of salt. Now, what I think is that raising provinces is too valuable. I would say losing development in provinces when you raise is net positive. That way it's cheaper to core. And in most campaigns, coring is going to be one of your biggest bottlenecks. So it solves that. And it gives you power points and money, which basically is just like all positives. What I'm saying is raising provinces needs to have more of a negative consequence or it needs to be less valuable than what you receive. I would say it should be more expensive to core the provinces if you raise them. If you raise somebody's land after conquering them, they're going to be super rebellious and they're going to be harder to integrate into your nation, not the other way around. And in the games currently, it's the other way around where you burn someone's land to the ground and now they're more likely or easy to integrate into your nation, which really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Anyhow, those are just a couple ideas that I wanted to float around. Kind of like a what if I worked for Paradox, what would I want to do? But also I did want to say Paradox, get someone like me to work on EU5, someone who naturally tries things that you wouldn't think to try and breaks the game in a lot of ways. And if that person has time to play test the game, it's going to be a lot more polished for people like me to get my hands on it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.